Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you're joining me here. This is a new podcast, yours truly, Dave. That's I want to be called. I want to be called that, Dave. So I just want to say to you guys, I'm glad you joined me. I hope you're here in my podcast. I do many things on my YouTube channel. I won't mention my YouTube channel. You guys will have to guess about it. Uh, so I will say this to you guys. Listen to what I got to say. And this will definitely, this will be on EQ Sound. This will be on EQ Sound, if you know what that means. Um, and this will be sounding very good to the human ear. Um, I just want to say one quick thing. I'm here for your, your listening pleasures. Uh, I'm here for you guys to uh, get, take notice or take notice. So if you follow me on these YouTube uh, channels, you know that everybody's touting different things these days. They're touting with cop watches. Uh, they're touting urban exploring. They're touting with uh, abandoned buildings. That's right, abandoned buildings. Uh, these are buildings that are run down, graffiti in them, inside and out. Uh, and nobody lives there. So this is like Ben and Buildings. That's why they say in the title, Ben and Buildings. Uh, so it's very dangerous. People are telling these people, the users out there, on their videos to not go to these places because they're run down, graffiti everywhere. It's saturated with graffiti. I kid you not. Uh, uh, and uh, it's not a pretty sight uh, if I were pun of a pun. Um, but yeah, just bear that in mind. That's what the title says, Abandoned Buildings. And sometimes it could be schools, buildings, you name it. These are places un unusable. They call it unusable. Um, they shut them down for many reasons. This is many reasons, folks. Uh, nobody lived there for many, 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 many years. And uh, for whatever reason, they left the, the buildings to be, well, it's sad. Once you see these uh, videos, it's pretty sad. i got to admit, it's pretty sad. But it's in the... Uh, it's like uh, growth is set in in these buildings. Um, it's not like the buildings you go in today. Like uh, everybody used a any kind of building around the world. This is buildings to you name it. But what they do with abandoned buildings is let them to rot. Essentially that. Let them to rot. And it's kind of like an eyesore for everybody. Um, and um, sometimes they'll uh, bid them. They'll bid these buildings. And to, it's like a fixer-upper kind of buildings. Uh, some people go to mansions, big mansions, big high. They call. Them, once you go in these places, guess what? When you go in these places, big high ceilings. I kid you not. Big high ceilings. They're not like low ceilings. They're like high ceilings. You know. Uh, so you you'll see them from the camera angles. Uh, so high ceilings. Uh, this guy went to a mansion and it looked pretty good. It looked pretty good and, and no graffiti inside the building. It's just a beautiful, had a piano there, a grand piano. That's the only thing they left there, a uh, grand piano. And they all left, took everything out of the building. Shit, you know what you see this. Uh, so they left, and uh, it's just now it's just now the um, so-called um, urban exploring people that do these sort of things. Uh, they go with their cameras, film inside and out of the building, and it looks, looks great. It's just sad for me to see these things. Uh, but, yeah, some of the buildings, not all buildings are graffitied heavily. Um, sometimes you might be lucky and uh, it looks nice. It looks like it's inside and out. But it's banded. Remember, the word is banded. Uh, so it means what it means. It means everybody just left. They took their stuff and left. And uh, that's it. That's it. And the place is abandoned and left to so-called rot. And uh, it's just sometimes... Um, due to uh, many things, just bear that in mind, due to, to, to many things. And these are just urban explorers, you see them on YouTube, and they're out there exploring the world, as they say. That's the name implies, they would say. Um, so they go out there exploring with their cameras, and and they do, they do use Google Maps to look for these places. They look on Google Maps to find these places, and uh, you might be lucky. And, uh, yeah, this is not random. This is what they'll say, not random. They find them on Google Maps, and they just do a research on them. Uh, but there's several buildings that are abandoned, no longer used anymore. I mean, anymore. If you go to there, you'll know what I mean. So uh, sometimes you might be lucky it's not graffiti yet. Uh, some Other times there is. Uh, it depends on how the building is rotted or if it's just uh, for a few years that they left. And everything is gone. Once you go to these places, everything is gone. It's like everything is just taken left to rot. And and for many reasons, many reasons. It's not because someone took everything and 
and you know burglar or anything like that. It's just they went for many reasons. Uh, they, sh they shut down a place for I don't know. Just, you know they want you. It's like schools. Sometimes they'll go to schools and they'll take things and um, it's just the word in the in subtitles they'll say abandoned buildings or abandoned haunted and there's the thing called haunted houses or haunted buildings and these are what i call uh, portuguese or um paranormal kind of size these are ghostly figures these are ghostly figures and uh sometimes not all these these places are very haunted it's, it's what you believe in and there's stories to this there's stories to these buildings and people have the stories and they tell you a good story about okay we've seen this ghost go by um so so they have good stories about these buildings and these buildings were made in the 1800s mind you in the 1800s it's not recently so it's very old it's not like very new building you go into uh so it's quite old it's um it's 100 years old these buildings that they go into and you can find them on Google Maps. They're just abandoned, and they don't use them anymore. It's just non-usable um, for many reasons. Don't ask me. It's just many reasons. And um, they're quite interesting. They're it's just it's like an adventure. I would call them like people go there to, to venture into. Uh, and you got to be careful. You got to be careful. These some of these buildings could be dangerous. I mean, very very much dangerous. Uh, and uh, they're uh, sometimes they're. All sorts of things, and um, and yeah, just um, I myself would never do that sort of thing because due to it's uh, and uh, not all villains are you know abandoned. It's just when you go there, sometimes you might be sometimes it might be abandoned, and you might be lucky. Uh, so it depends on what you see in the building. So when it's abandoned, when there's nothing there, and the windows are kind of broken out, and it's kind of branded. Uh, sometimes they'll see graffiti if you're lucky enough. Um, and it's heavily graffiti. I kid you not, heavily graffiti inside and out of the of these places. Um, and the, sometimes they might they might be boarded up, um, so they don't want people going there. Essentially, they don't want people going there, and uh, for good reason, you know, good for good right. So, anyway, I want to iterate that on YouTube videos. But nobody, like I said, not everybody has to do this sort of thing. You know, it's just the. Uh, the urban explorer people like to do this sort of thing. Uh, they go out there, they venture out, and they take the risks. They test your risks. It's like anything in the world. They take risks, and uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I gotta admit that these, uh, you know, it's it's a very good once you see these videos. It's just uh, something to see for, and uh, and uh, sometimes you might learn uh, about the building and how it became what it is, and uh, I. I'll give you an example. These are YouTubers. I shouldn't tell their names, but they're um, they they have a whole entire video dedicated to these abandoned buildings, schools, old schools, very old schools um, that uh, they rarely use anymore. I mean, I kid you not, rarely not used anymore. Nobody goes there. It's abandoned entirely, inside and out, um, and it's just it's just not rarely used anymore. That's what they'll say that to you, and. Um, due to a lot of factors um but yeah and it's not because of the the school itself it's just they don't use it anymore i don't know you're gonna have to ask them but anyway like i said that's why the title says abandoned uh, if you get what i'm following you get what i'm saying here um so these are abandoned buildings and whatever reason as they say they're just abandoned and uh no use anymore and they're led to rot essentially and it's a sad, sad reality when you see them on video. They're really sad reality. It's just no one doesn't want to do a fixer-upper. These are uh, places that want to be fixer-upper. So what they do, they put them in auction. They put these places in auction to really sell them. To really sell them. And and these are places just fixer-uppers. And these are not like they have stuff in them. They're fixer-uppers. And uh, once you buy the place, you have to do... You have to fix it up a bit, so it'll be good back as new if you put some money towards it. And, uh, yeah, it would be look as good as new, uh, like the day that he <laughs> walked right in. Uh, so, and, uh, yeah, so anyway, so there you go, folks. I appreciate those uh, vloggers out there that do this sort of thing for a living, actually. And I come to appreciate that. And uh, they usually have a good story before they get there. Um, and uh, it just... Uh, 
I'm, I just find these people very fascinating to me. I just, uh, for some odd reason, I really do. And I come to appreciate that. I really do. Um, it's, not always, it's not always the politicians of the world. It's not always cop watch. It's other videos that are out there. They're trying to switch up everything. They're trying to do urban exploring to beaches to uh, just uh, the other day this guy who goes um, uh, what do you call it uh, detective metal detecting you know they would get a thing that do metal detecting just underground do metal detecting that's what kind of hobby is that uh, but yeah metal detecting so you find it might not be gold but metal detecting one of these things it's like a magnet on the ground it just finds these uh, particles on the ground and sometimes you might find old relics they call them, old relics and uh yeah it's fascinating to me it's very fascinating and they use a metal detector and sometimes they'll use a professional one or they'll use just the ones they buy in the store uh so and uh yeah so i come to appreciate these youtubers they they're out there they're out there to uh, really really do what they need to do without our crates their you know they got to create that content as they would say they got to create that content and their subscriber base and the viewership and when they monetize their videos you get paid that's the way they get paid they don't get paid from their videos they get paid for the ads that's the downside so it's just the ads on videos uh, that their own videos when they vlog. So, so essentially, what I'm just trying to say for you folks out there on YouTube, they don't get paid for their own video, their own you know creations. They say um, of a video, and they don't get paid for that. They only get paid from the commercial ads. That's why the some of the videos on YouTube gets monetized from that from that monetized. It's because of the commercials that they put on there, and uh, they only get paid for the commercials that run on their YouTube channels. And some people thought that's terrible. You know, that's why I, I, I'm a strong believer, as they say, as a lot of people would say out there in the world. I'm a strong believer of not that, unless they're willing to pay me for my commercial ads. And that's the theory of mine, folks. Theory of mine. But um, so I want to say to you guys that um, I really appreciate what you guys do out there on YouTube. Keep doing what you're doing, and people appreciate what you're doing out there. They really take notice of what your videos out there. They really do. Not just the President of the United States sees your videos out there. It's the people who are uh, in government to, uh, and uh, and they really take notice. Sometimes, <laughs> sorry about that cough. Sorry. They really take notice. They really take notice of your creation of your video creations. Um, these are amazing videos. Sometimes amazing videos that uh, it, it's like an awe moment. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's not always the government people putting out their own videos. It's just regular you and I, Joel Small off the street doing videos and creation. They got to do content, 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 folks. Content, eh? Content. Uh, so, but when I say to you people, just get a vlog, ordinary vlog camera. Go into a store, go to a camera store and get a vlog camera. Whatever vlog camera you want to get. Uh, whatever amount of money you can uh, have. And just the, the best cameras are out there I see is nowadays from the Sony cameras to the uh, Nokia cameras. And these are just vlog cameras because uh, they'll do the zoom. They'll do the zoom, in, uh, you know, in and out in the zoom lens. And, um, and uh, yeah, they'll have light cameras. They'll have, you know, light, continuous light. Yeah. And so all you need is an ordinary camera to do vlog videos. Just ordinary camera. It doesn't matter... As long as, it, as long as it can upload to YouTube, that's good, you know. And so there, these are user, these are YouTuber users out there that have their own platform, have YouTube platforms out there. And uh, there's a lot of them out there. And they wanna they wanna show they wanna share their videos out there. I mean, sometimes videos go viral, uh, rightly so, as they say. Uh, so yeah, they get the lot they get a lot of views out of the viral videos. And uh, they, they go into the thousands of views uh, on just the viral videos alone. So, so there you go, folks. So if, the way to start, uh, so if people want to ask how you get a YouTube channel, all you have to do is start fresh. Start fresh. Start how you get how you get it going to how you get a YouTube channel going. You'll be excited to get your YouTube channel going. A lot of people start their own YouTube channels like a brand new YouTube channel. And they're real excited at the moment because they got a YouTube uh, channel going. 
it's like you know now they can share their videos out there to the world not just them seeing it and their close close knit family um uh, but everybody can see it and they can share it share the links they always say share the links um and yeah you can, there's many ways you can share share the videos on youtube many ways um uh, i see it from the user standpoint um so there you go folks uh, you can share the videos and uh yeah just because they want you to see the videos they want you to see the videos not just not just see it on their channels but see the videos share it it keeps telling you that folks will share the videos and they would say video is powerful and they're not kidding video is powerful folks so there you go folks and uh, I want to leave you in a positive note I really want to leave you as a positive note uh, I myself is going to tell you that uh, I'm just excited what YouTubers can, uh, are accomplished out there. Really do, really do. It's just good or for bad. It's good videos. Uh, sometimes it's not. I can always watch few YouTube videos at a time. Not every YouTuber out there posts up their own videos. I can see videos because it's really hard to see everyone's video. It's just really impossible. Um, so I pick and choose. It's the old adjective, I kind of pick and choose what I want to see, what I don't want to see. And I almost have a thousand subscribers up there, and it really, really, not all of them I'm going to see. Uh, and uh, there's good ones and bad ones. There's not so good ones, and there's ones that are really want to create that story um, and really take notice for it. And uh, they title their own videos. They title their own videos on YouTube, and uh, sometimes it's a little catchy, to get a catchy uh, subtitles. And they're really, uh, you know, it's an eye opener sometimes, really eye opener. And um, I saw it first handful, and um, <coughs> sorry, sorry about a cough, sorry. Uh, but yeah, but l listen, everybody, listen, everybody, listen. Okay, so here, here's my uh, here's my situation on this. Bob Lazar, who a lot of people don't know, he used to work at Area 51. I've touted this so many times. Uh, Bob Lazar, who used to work at Area 51. Now his name was raced off. Area 51 for good reason. This was back in the early 80s. Uh, he was sounding the alarm, as they say, sounding the alarm about UFOs. Uh, he was the only person on this goddamn planet that worked there, according to what I've heard. Uh, so, Bob Lazar, is, you, you might know his name from many things. He's a, he's a guy with many names, okay? <laughs> guy with many hats, right? Uh, so, yeah, he's a guy who used to work at Area 51, Nevada area. And um, he has a big, long, lengthy story about all this. I kid you not. Um, so, yeah, he worked there at Area 51, Nevada area. This is um, where extraterrestrials, and this is a secret naval base. That's what everybody was touting about. Uh, that you can't go down there and uh, expect, uh, expect to get in trouble. Uh, but, yeah, you got to be careful when you go to Area 51. And many people have tried. I kid you not. Many people tried and got shipped for it. I told you a story the other day. Um, these two ladies were trying to find directions. I kid you not. This is not funny. Uh, two ladies were finding this direction. Know what they did after? They got in their vehicle, and guess what they did? They went past a certain line. And those guys up in the, uh, what do you call it, up there in the hillside went after them. Because they couldn't, because they can't go past a certain line. They just can't, they just can't, they just can't. So, uh, so they have big signs to even tell you that before you do that. Um, so, so you can't pass a certain line. They have big signs once you get there. Uh, and uh, these these uh, guys with, bron I guess you call these guys with Broncos, these vehicles. And they're way up in the uh, hillside. Um and Jesse Ventura, if you know that guy very well, H. Uh, Ventura, he tried that. He almost tried that, but he didn't. But, yeah, he it was almost tempted to do that. So there you go, folks. And uh, you didn't hear from me, right? <laughs> you didn't hear from me. So, yes. Um, so I advise everybody not to do that, not to go to Area 51. It's a secret naval base, and for a good reason. Uh, for uh, many people have tried seeing these YouTubers on YouTube videos. This is quite a while, quite a while. They tried to do this. They tried to go past a certain line. They're in shit if they do that. Uh, so yeah, and apparently, apparently it's a federal uh, land. Apparently, and um, so folks, uh, let me let me put a warning to you guys or disclaimers out there. 
uh, do not go to Area 51. I think a lot of people have said that past the YouTube videos. Uh, but the guy who who worked there, I kid you not, Bob Lazar, the one and only person on this planet who worked there. But he's on low key at the moment. Uh, 2003, he uh, did a radio interview with uh, Art Bell, if you uh, pardon the pun, just name recognition. Um, went on his radio program and he was low key. He was very low key. He didn't want to talk about aliens or, uh, you know, so called aliens and uh, aircrafts and all the stuff that people disclosures that they always talk about. Um, uh, he was low key. He didn't want to talk about it. It's like in the past for him. Uh, so he worked there, but he just didn't want to discuss it. Uh, he's moved on from that. This is back in 2003 when he had the interview. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if he's still around to the day, but he did a film about it to, uh, to put one out there, I think a year ago. Um, and uh, he really delved in, it's almost 25 years later, to, to be honest with you people. Uh, so, yeah, he was the first person in the world to really sound the alarms with Area 51 and so-called, you know, extraterrestrials, as they would deem it as, um, from another world, from another, you know, universe, as they say. So these are, uh, he knows more uh, about the uh, alien crafts, aliens, and all this sort of nonsense that goes on. Uh, these are not just airplanes going in our skies today. Uh, these are alien crafts that zoom up really fast and go zoom way fast. I mean, it, <laughs> if you've ever seen videos, this is not trickery or anything. This is alien. I never saw an alien craft do that. But Bob Lazar will tell you, he worked on one of these alien crafts, so-called alien crafts. Um, but they have a pulsion. They call it the pulsion thing. Um, and that's why they zoom up really fast and zoom out really fast. Uh, so it's like I said, folks, uh, be very worried about this, okay? <laughs> I kid you not. And uh, this was back in the early 80s with uh, the President of the United States. He had, um, uh, I'm going to take the caution away here. Um, the President of the United States saw these little aliens, so-called real green men, as they dubbed it as. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... 30 plus years, they had um, videos out there, disclaimers. Now, remember, people would say disclaimers on this. Um, and, uh, yeah, but they see them on their cameras. I kid you not. This, <laughs> these are alien craft. They zoom up the, up the skies and zoom away fast, really fast, more faster than, um, if I pardon the punt, than these uh, speed things, these airplane speed things. And, um, yeah, so like I said, they can outrun these uh, air aircraft things. And it's really sad. It's really it's much sad. I kid you not. And, uh, yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, so when you hear people talking about aliens and so-called alien crafts and um, extraterrestrials, you know what I mean, right? So, yeah, so folks, let's uh, pray for these aliens from other planets. They're here for not for us humans to not destroy ourselves. That's what they come down here for. So us humans don't destroy us. And uh, but they sometimes sometimes we don't know if they're here for good or for bad. That's the only point that we have trouble with. Uh, so are they here to save us? Is aliens here to save us or destroy us? That's the question. Uh, so yes, rest in peace for that. Right, rest in peace. Um, and one other thing, one other thing I got to say to you guys, it's not always ghosts, it's not always aliens, it's not always so-called men in black, the real men in black, it's not the, uh, the film men in black, it's real men in black. Um, I think uh, Dan Aykroyd, if I remember right, an actor, uh, Dan Aykroyd, came across these people, uh, men in black, these are scary people, these are, I kid you not, scary people. Uh, Dan Aykroyd had... Uh, come across these people, so-called real men in black. Uh, these are agencies that don't get mentioned very often. Um, and they have an own agency of, their, of themselves. And try, people are trying to picture this, you know, picture this. Uh, so it's not, like, it's not like the police force. It's not like uh, <laughs> Navy people. It's uh, real men in black. They're out there with black vehicles. And people are trying to pitch and really think about this. Dan Aykroyd had a sight of this. If you ask Dan, Roy, uh, Dan Aykroyd, he, he'll tell you about these stories that he had counters with. 
but yeah, but these are uh, agencies that are, don't belong with the government. They belong with themselves. If you know, if you can, if you follow me, kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, so if you come across these people, be very worried because you got to be careful. These people uh, are here to make sure that we don't see aliens or alien crafts. They don't want us to see these sort of called alien vehicles. So, there you go. I know, I know what I'm saying. I'm not the third party here, folks. So, I know what I'm saying. I've seen these videos on YouTube, and it looks scary to me. Just seeing these videos. A while back, I was very scared about all this stuff. Um, and, um, Big Brother Theory. Now, the Big big Brother Theory, they had a show, a TV show that would scare the living GBs out of you people. Uh, they have uh, cameras out now, they see these cameras out in the streets and stuff. And that uh, when I saw this TV show, I was scared to shitless. Uh, this TV show would, uh, you know, it would, uh, it would, cr you would cringe in this program. Uh, and they always call these uh, cameras, these are like, uh, you know, these Big Brother theories, you know, and that the cameras are out to see if there's any, uh, you know, terrorist people out there. And like I said, folks, you gotta be very worried what the government's doing. I kid you not, folks. Very worried, yeah. Uh, so. So, I'm going to leave you guys with a happy note, a very happy note. Um, we all have people in our, in our world with uh, different lifestyles, different uh, stories to tell out there. That's why we have stories to tell, right? And uh, these are families have big stories, uh, happy stories to the sad stories. To people that lost someone, to people who are happy about the way the world, world works. At the moment, they're not so happy anymore. For some strange reason, I see it all walks of life of people on YouTube videos. They either are not happy with themselves, or it's just the stories that they have. They have stories about their family, and it's really shit. It's really not to be, you know, put them in a down or anything. It's just, you know, fam they have family that uh, lo they lost a lot of family. I mean, this is hard for them to really grasp at. I mean, I mean, it's like their own brother. It's like their own brother, you know, in their lives. You know, they want to hug them and everything. It's like their own brother. You kind of want to be cheerful about that. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, folks, you know, cherish them the rest of their lives, you know, because they could be your brother, it could be your sister. You know, appreciate what they do in life, you know. Appreciate that they're alive. They're not dead, they're alive as a human being. You know, uh, you know, there's always sisters, brothers, you know, they always fight as little kids. You know, sometimes they always get their way, you know, sometimes they uh, disagreements and, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you could have some of those people in, in families. We've all been there, right? And um, there's stories around the world. That's why what makes us human. We have stories to tell. And I always tell those people, tell, tell the story, uh, uh, you know, as a digress kind of thing. <laughs> you know, I would like to hear. I'm not going to laugh at these people. I'm just I want to hear. You know, I'm just kind of. A, it's like the sound-minded kind of person. So they have stories. These people have gr grip, and as they say, grip in stories. And it doesn't have to be that way, you know. And just sometimes it's uh, it's not always you, right? They always say it's not always you, but sometimes it could be because you just never know. Yeah, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not gravitating to them or anything. I'm just saying um, they do have stories. When I see stories on YouTube, it just it just it just heart wrenching to hear these stories. This is really heart wrenching. This this is uh, do with family members. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to laugh at these people. You know, sometimes they have sad stories. They lost their loved ones, and it's really gravitate. It's really devastating to them. Yeah. Uh, but you know we. We're only human. We're not robots in the world. You know, you know, we only live one life. You know, that's what we have. You know, thank God we're humans. We have emotions. We have feelings. We have uh, when we get hurt. When we when people hurt our feelings, we get sad. We cry. Um, we get upset. We get very upset. We get mad. We get angry. That's what we have feelings for. And um, that's the real true. You know, as humans, that's what we have in this world. We are humans. We're not just robots. You know, robots don't have feelings. They're out there to help the humans. But think about that. Think about that for a second. Uh, I, I was always touting that the uh, robots are going to kill the world. Uh, but yeah, the, the, they always say the three laws of a robot. 
And uh, yeah, so I like to hear the people's stories out there because it really, really it fascinates me. And um, I want to I want to hear a lot of stories out there. And it's uh, a good story, bad story, to not so good story. To and I won't laugh at these people. I really won't because I know I can understand from the human aspect. Because uh, remember, they have feelings. They're going to cry. They're going to whip out. Uh, they're going to have their defaults, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll cry with them, you know. If they're going to cry, we'll cry with them. And uh, it's like uh, we'll have a crying moment. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's devastating to everybody. So there you go, folks. And uh, this is my podcast of the day, and I really appreciate you guys to hear me out. And um, this is not me ranting or uh, I'm not like Alex Jones on InfoWars. Um and uh, so you have learned something today. I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, and uh, it's not always the politicians uh, pulling the strings around these worlds. It's not always the leaders. It's not always Donald Trump. It's not always Joe Biden saying golly knows what in every, every protesting going on. Uh, you don't have to take their word for it, but uh, it's nice to hear them. It's nice to hear them. Like I say, you don't always have to agree with them. That's the beauty of, uh, of the world we live in. I always have to agree with them, and uh, if you agree with them, hey, that's great. Wonderful. You know? But like I said, folks, we have uh, leaders around the world. That's why that's why we have leaders, because they lead the world. It's like uh, the analogy I would use is like a ship. If you're a, a, a captain of a ship, it's like that theory. You need, a captain, you need a captain of a ship to steer the whole country. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, you know, like a cruise ship or a naval ship. And um, I'm just fascinated about everything. And this is not to my, this is all about my knowledge. You want to know, learn more? You can learn more. Uh, so I've learned all this, this uh, all this stuff 30 or 40 plus years of all this stuff what humans go through. Uh, in a day, week, month, year. And not because I gravitate to them. It's just they have stories to tell out there. And sometimes it's gripping. Sometimes it's happy, sad, mad, angry, upset. We all get upset, right? Um, and, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm so happy and I'm glad to talk about this, air out my differences. And, uh, and yeah, very much. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to say ciao for now. I'm glad you listened. And if you learned any, any, learned any something today, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just who I am as a person on this world, living living amongst us kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yes. Yeah, so appreciate that, and don't forget everybody. The election is November third. Let's oh, and and let's say change the date. Let's say uh, you know Joe Biden the other day. I thought he had a good speech the other day. I was this is I'm re thinking about this. Uh, but he had a good speech there. He was just touting uh, Donald Trump as he always does. Um, he's uh, he's doesn't he has a plan. He has a plan. Don't worry, guys. He has a plan. Uh, bigger, better. What's the game? Bigger, better. Something. I don't know. Uh, but that's what he's telling nowadays. He has Kamala Harris at his side. I haven't seen Kamala Harris as of recently. Uh, not to be uh, excited about it, but just Kamala Harris. She's she's here nor there for me. Uh, she uh, has her own <laughs> and um, yeah so anyway hope you enjoyed your day hope you enjoyed your night and uh, I want to say to you people I really enjoy being a human being oh in case you didn't know my friend did pass away 31 years I'm still sad to this day that I lost my dear friend and uh, 31 years 31 years as I know him uh, and uh, he was a solid friend a very solid friend um, and he, I learned off him, and he learned off me, and uh, which is great, wonderful. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes he kind of does it in a humorous way, kind of thing. Uh, you know, make sure you're, you know, you're on the right track of your life. Yeah, yeah. So he keeps you, he keeps you. How do you say it? Uh, on your chippy toes. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he, sometimes, sometimes what my friend does. When he's alive, sometimes he'll say it in a humorous kind of way when he says some things. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I always agree with him, but he's a good friend to me for 31 years. Uh, it was pretty devastating for me. I didn't cry about it. It's just, back in my mind, it was just really devastating. 
So, yeah, a friend I knew for 31 years is just astounding. And uh, I said to him before he, uh, if one of us did pass away, we would try and communicate beyond the grave kind of thing. Uh, so, so you know, thank God for the people out there that communicate to the, to the dead. We're the living, the people that are buried six feet underground are from the dead. Uh, so yes, we're from the living, and the other people are from the dead. So my friend at the moment is from the dead, and uh, he died not due to the coronavirus, to um, natural causes. You want to hear about it, natural causes, cause of death, natural causes. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Um, so I was still like everybody else. He passed away, um, and. Uh, I'm still, still uh, reeling about this over uh, this, and uh, and uh, yeah, this lady at the uh, funeral service, I forget, the tail end of the funeral service, she was crying, she was turning around in her seat, and she was, I don't know who she was at first, but she was crying, and uh, I don't know who she was at first, uh, but yeah, she, I just stuck in my mind, I said, what? <laughs> anyway, so anyway, it was a good funeral service, we said her last goodbyes, as everybody would do. Um, and the last ride in the world, and it was quite sad, it was very quite sad, and, uh, yeah. Glad we did our eulogy, and, uh, and you probably saw, uh, you know, in that in open casket thing, and, uh, yeah, it was just uh, sad for me to see that. But, yeah. So, anyway, like I said, if it, if it, if it helps me, that's good. If it doesn't, so be it. Yeah. He only has his own life, uh, so he he was like 45 years old, 45 years old, if you can believe that. Yeah, so in that 45 years of his life, 31 of his years of being friends, this is in the early stages. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we've become friends ever since, and uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, a lot of people want to be around with him, I'm not kidding, a lot of people want to be around with him because he's very, he's very uh, lovable in a way. Some people consider him very lovable. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go, folks. Thank you for everybody. Uh, I'm sorry it's a lengthy, but I gotta go.